All right, so now I have a map that's configured the way that I want, and the layers are displayed, and the pop-ups are ready, so on and so forth. So what I would like to do now is create a new layer that can be edited into. <clears throat> and there's multiple ways to do this, but how what I'm going to demonstrate is producing what's known as a hosted feature layer. Specifically, we're going to generate a point layer where users can upload wildlife sightings uh, across the Ma National Forest. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my uh, content in ArcGIS Online. And I'm going to create a new uh, hosted feature layer. So to do that, I'm going to the Create tab, and then I select Create Layer. So there's already a bunch of like pre-made templates for you know, common use cases uh, available in ArcGIS Online. Um, so we could start with one of these if we found one that was similar to what we're wanting to create. Um, however, I'm just going to start from scratch. So I'm going to do a build a layer, and we have our different geometry set up here. So what I am going to do is create a point layer, and then we'll hit create. Okay, and then we'll do next. Um, what this uh, what this window allows you to do is set like a an extent for the layer, like, kind of like a bounding box. Um, so I'm just going to zoom in to the roughly the extent of the state, and we'll just accept that. And then we have to give it a title. So I'm going to call this Wildlife Sightings Mon Forest. And then some tags. Uh, that already has a data collection as a tag. Do West Virginia GP again, and then Mon Forest. And then we'll do, uh, we'll give a short description or summary wildlife sightings in Mon Forest. Okay, and then this will save into our Mon Forest folder within my content. Okay. Um, all right, so let's do done, and that should now generate a hosted feature layer. So again, a hosted feature layer is basically a, a, a feature class type object that's being stored on ArcGIS Online. So it's basically the raw vector data, point line polygon. Okay, so this loads that layer. So we have this object, and then within it we have our points layer added in. All right, so now we need to set up some characteristics of the data. So what we're going to start off with is adding in some attributes. So I'm going to go to data and then fields. And note there's already some attributes available in here. So we have like an object ID, a, a unique identifier, some fields associated with the editor and creator of content. Um, what I, and then we have this last field, which is photos and files, which allows you to add attachments, like uh, media attachments uh, associated with each point. So I'm going to create a new uh, field or, or a new column. Um, we're going to do, we're going to call it sighting type. And the display name, again, is like the, an alias, so it's a more readable name. So we'll just do citing type, and we'll set it to a text um, that'll be long enough. We don't really need a default, um, and we're going to do uh, we're going to turn off allow null because we want the user to have to put something in that field. So I'm going to do add new field, and that should generate that that new field. Okay, so that added it here under citing type. Again, that t that's the display name, the alias, and then the actual field name, and then the data type. So I'm going to go into this field and actually define a couple more uh, characteristics. So we would like the user to only be able to add um, from a uh, add a feature from a list of of types. So I'm going to do this create list. And effectively, this allows you to generate a coded values type domain. So I'm going to make some um, subtypes. I'm going to do small mammals, and we'll set that as code 0. Uh, deer is code 1. And then uh, let's do uh, bears, bear. Let's make everything singular. 2. Uh, birds, three. 
small mammal, deer, bear, birds. Okay, so that should work. So let's do save. And now we have a domain set up. Again, it's basically a coded values domain. All right, so I'm going to go back now to the fields. So let's add another field, and we're going to call this sighting date. And again, an, a better name. And we'll set that to a date type. Um, we don't need a default, and we'll make them fill it in. And we'll add a new field for that. That really doesn't need uh, domains, so we'll just we don't have to do anything additional. All right, so um, now I'm going to add another field called um, let's see um, comments. And we'll make that string and we'll increase the length so they could put up to a, a thousand characters in there. Okay, um, so I think that'll do it. I don't think we really need anything else. So the data component should be good now. So now I'm going to go to visualization. And here we can actually define how this layer is going to look. So by default, it just is coming in with a single symbol. What I'm going to do is symbolize based on the different, uh, the different siding types. So we'll go to siding type. And then we'll do unique. And then these are the default unique values, or sorry, unique symbols. So what I want to do is actually change those. So I'm going to go to Shape and National Parks, and we'll pick something from this list. So this is a bear, so we'll grab this bear icon here. Note that if you are real specific, you can, about your symbols, you can also go in here and actually upload your own uh, icons to use and whatnot. Um, I'm just again using these default ones that are made available through Esri. Um, there's generally a good bit of options in here so I find that generally I can find something that works just from the available list. Let's see birds, I'll use this waterfowl. Again I'm just bumping the size up here. I thought I saw a deer in here earlier, so there we go, deer. And again, bump the size up a bit. Note that this stuff can always be changed later if you change your mind or want to edit it further. And lastly, of small mammals, I'm going to use binoculars for that. And okay. And then hit OK, and then Done to make sure those changes are accepted. Now I'm going to go over to Usage. Yes, again there. So that's just making some changes. All right, so now to Usage. This is just going to show you like w the uses of the layer, since it's basically new. Nothing's really going on with it. So there's no real information there yet. And then we'll go to Settings. So this section is important if you're wanting to set up such that a layer can be edited. So uh, this is all fine. Uh, under editing, we're gonna we have enable editing turned on, so that means a user should be able to edit it. Um, and then we have keep track of created and updated features off. I don't think that's necessary, so we'll leave it. Enable sync is on, so that means that you could collect data offline. So for example, if you were collecting data with a phone, it could it could basically cache it collect data on the local drive of the phone and then upload the data once you have like an internet connection available. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll leave this as add, update, and delete features. So that means any user could add, update, or edit or delete features. Uh, editors can see all features. I think that's fine. Editors can th theoretically edit all features. That's fine. Yeah, so I think all this is good. So. I don't have any major issues here. We actually didn't make any changes, so that should be fine. Okay, so let's go to overview again. And I'm going to go to share and set some sharing options. So we're going to share with the organization and the public. So theoretically, anybody could um, edit this layer. And then we'll do save. And this is just warning me that that means anyone could edit it. We'll do update. All right. 
So if we go in here to share now, again, it's for everybody. Okay, so now we have a layer um, with nothing in it. So I'm gonna go into content again, and I'm gonna go to my map and open a map view. And I, now I wanna actually add that new layer to this map object. I'm just gonna turn everything off but the, the background for now. Okay, so I'm gonna go to add, uh, search for layer, and then again, this, by default, this is gonna go into my content in ArcGIS Online. There's the new feature I just created, so I'm gonna add that. And if I go back to the map, that should now be listed there. Uh, one thing I want to do is edit the name to make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly. And I'm just going to get rid of these underscores. So we'll just call it Wildlife Sightings as a kind of alias name in the map. Again, if we look at the legend here, you can see what things will look like in the legend. I'm also going to go down here to this uh, uh, imagery, and I'm going to hide it in the legend because we don't. it's kind of just like a base layer. We don't really need it. Okay, so we got good names on things. We got our new layer. So the next thing we want to do is test and actually make sure that that layer works, um, meaning that we can edit into it. All right, so I'm going to just pick a point. Again, this is all just going to be made up. We don't really need, um, we're not really going to use some real data here. So I'm going to go to edit now. And then there we have our templates. I'm going to say that I saw a deer and we're going to put a mark here. And then this allows you to fill out the attributes. So uh, it already filled in deer since we picked from that subtype there or that domain. Uh, we'll say today around, uh, let's see, 1 p.m. And then there's a comment field so we can put in a comment. So, uh, I don't know, we'll just say, uh, so, uh, let's see. Four point buck. I don't know. All right, so uh, again, you could add, if you took an image, like a picture with your phone or something, or a video, you could upload it here. I don't have anything, so we're not going to do that. Um, one thing that's weird about editing is there's no like save button. You just hit the X up here, and then it's saved, which is kind of odd, but that's just how it works. So now if we clicked on this object, It'll tell us that information about it, and it also tells us the user who created it, which which was me in this case. Okay, so that's um, looks like our data point is our data is our our uh, our feature, hosted feature layer is working. So I'm just going to save the map to make sure, and uh, I think we basically have a functional map and a function functional layer we can edit into. So now we can start making apps from these data uh, using the map and data.